everybody, John Grimsmo here. So, I was going through my computer files and I found a bunch of videos that I never got edited or posted. And they're from a year and a half ago, but I'm looking at them going, they're still good, they're still relevant, I still want to post them, I just never got around to it. Uh, these show the very first time that I did fully 3D machined knife handles. And uh, it's got some good close-up footage of the handles and some thoughts on my first, uh, first go at it, so I, I wanted to show you guys that. But also put a disclaimer out that it is a year and a half old and uh, but I'm still proud to show it so it's pretty cool I've done a lot of 3d handles since this um, so it's been a really good uh, experience for me to go through that so check it out hope you enjoy So these handles turned out absolutely fantastic. It's the first 3D machine handles that I've made so far and I'm just in love with them. The slight contour, the 3D machined pattern, I just love everything about them. They're thinner and lighter than a regular Norseman, just about way cooler. This pattern turned out pretty cool. I, I wasn't sure if I would like it or not, but, uh, but it's all right. Only thing is the little mistake right there in the code. I had my retraction set too low, so it didn't lift up and clear it enough. Oopsie. But as you can see, I looked back on the simulation, and that was actually there on the simulation. So I should have seen it coming on the computer, but I didn't, so that's okay. I was particularly pleased with how my corner round, the little radius around the corners turned out. You know, I, I coated in a little corner around there. And on the front edge it did it too, and it just gave it a nice little contour so there's no sharp edges on the top. And here's a little thumb groove that I normally have, like that. And you can see how the 3D profile uh, sort of interpreted that and it turned out really sweet so yeah normal honeycomb handle versus the uh, 3d handle I got rid of this front groove just because I didn't think it was necessary in the 3d pattern and I kind of like it without Yeah, I mean, it shaved quite a bit of weight off just contouring it like that. And it's still the same thickness material. I started off with 8th inch, coated the handles to take about 5 thou off the top so that I know the tops will get cut. And it worked great. Yeah. So let's put it together real quick like. Yep. 
I always like to put them together with the blade not fully open or fully closed, just right about in this position. It works out to be the safest and most reliable way to do it. This one's not sharp yet, but... I'm just going to put one frame screw in. I guess I forgot to talk about the clip. Um, so normally I have a flat machined hole for the clip like that, but on a 3D pattern you can't have that or else it'll just get cut off. So I built it up. And the 3D just sort of avoided it and left it as a flat surface, which worked out awesome. And then the clip just fits right in there, nice and snug. And the screws come in from the backside and cinch it down nice and tight. And it fits great, doesn't wobble, it works perfect. Um, so yeah, no blade play, rock solid. Blade falls, flips. Love it. And it just, it feels contoured, like, I just love it. It's so cool. It's thinner, it's lighter. A little bit. But it's just got this sheen to it. This dynamic texture that I love. 3D machining is where it's at. I love 3D machining. I want to do so much more of it, and I will. So one of the biggest reasons that I did this pattern was mostly just to try out three different tool paths. For the main face of the handle, I've got a parallel tool path that basically crisscrosses. And then here I've got a linear tool path, also a parallel tool path, um, but just going one way, not crisscross, and you know, at a, this way angle, not 45. And then I've also got a trace tool path that goes, goes in here and follows the little loop just to clean up. The third toolpath that I did is a trace toolpath that goes in and traces this contour because doing a linear toolpath like this leaves it dent, 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 dent. The third toolpath that I wanted to try was a trace function where it follows the contour of this line because when I do this parallel it goes back, turns around, comes this way, turns around, comes this way and it leaves a little divot there, 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 there. It doesn't look so clean. So coming up with the eighth inch ball mill and just tracing in there cleaned it up made it look really nice and shiny because it's a tapered down um, so the trace is kind of a 3d path that just down and then back up and it worked out really good so except for that little divot that little scratch which is totally fixable next time I'm totally happy with how this turned out and I loved using HSM works uh, it's a really fun program can't wait to do more stuff like this. Different patterns, different styles, different textures, there's so many options. Even different knives will be a lot easier now. And the best part is this is fresh off the machine. I scotch braided the edges just a tiny little bit, but this pattern has not been tumbled or bead blasted or sanded or anything. And I mean, it's wonderful. So, there we have it guys, 3D machine handles, love them. Thanks for watching, bye.